And I'd like to talk to you today about bringing Google Apps into primary. Uh, just kind of a quick show of hands, how many of you are primary teachers? And how many of you use Google? So, okay, awesome. So today I'm gonna show you, share a little bit about what I have done and then give you examples of what I've done or what other teachers have done. So that just kind of spurs you on to be thinking, hey, I can do this and I can do it a little bit differently. Um, if you ever have any questions after today, you want to ask anything, please, you can waterworks me on Jen I'm at Jennifer, or you can go on to Twitter, I'm at Jenny Henry's. Hi. Sorry, can you flip back to the link just for two seconds? I'll, I'll be very fast. On this link, I have this slideshow, and then I also have files, which have all the files that I'm sharing on here. Um, it's a view only, so just create copies of them, and then feel free to use anything. So some of the things that I've made, and other things are some of the things that other people have made, but the people who are really big in uh, Gates with Primary also are very good at sharing. So they're, they're taking anything, and they're, you're allowed to use any of it. So feel free to use anything, change it, create what you want. You guys okay? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So the big, my big thing here is Google Apps can be used in primary too. I have found that sometimes in schools and we were just kind of chatting and some principals, or some schools go, okay, juniors, Chromebooks, primaries, iPads. And that's kind of what you're stuck with. But, and I know I said, I said at a, at a meeting one time, well, I want Chromebooks. And they looked at me because I'm the grade one teacher and they were like, you want Chromebooks? What would you use with a Chromebook? I think is what the question, they answered the question. <coughs> not do with a Chromebook. So I think this year actually our school has now offered it as a choice. So staff was able to decide if you want Chromebooks or iPads so they could go either one, which was a nice way to go. Um, just kind of a backstory, I have been a primary teacher for 10 years. Uh, this year I'm doing ELI, uh, music, reading, so it's a little bit different this year. Previous years I've done grade one for years um, and where I've brought it into the classroom. So my, here's my story is when I came back off of Matt Lee and we were at Ed Camp and um, Gabe was talked about all the time and about juniors and it was all about juniors or high school and it wasn't a lot of primary. I was like, what about primary? Like, where can we, where, what can we get in? So I chatted with Mark, chatted with Heidi and was like, okay, what can we do? I want, I want to talk to teachers. I want to make some connections with other people and they didn't really have a ton of names. So either you guys who were doing it aren't sharing or it's just not happening as much. So I was like, okay, I want to make this work. So I chatted with Heidi, we kind of got working together, and we got my grade ones on and started using it. I didn't have an elite class. Um, I had 11 boys, 8 girls, 5 ESL, 1 an IEP, 2 other boys going on IEPs, 3 kids of my class were reading above grade level. So it's not, I did not have this class that were like super, like you know those kids that you can just do anything with? It was just your average, regular class of kids. Um, but they were totally able to handle it. Going slow and doing things kind of step by step at first, but they can do it. Um, I created all this stuff at first with partners. So we logged in, we tried everything with partners. So they had their Google partner and they worked together at logging in and figuring it out and then they switched and then the other person would go. I did a high to low partnership at first so that my high student could kind of figure it out first by listening to the instructions and then my lower student could then do it second because they had help and they'd already seen it. So they were able to, I felt like there was all success everywhere. And then once they were logged in and figuring things out, that's when then, and as primary teachers, they were really great at doing centers and doing stations and during like guided reading or writer's workshop, this would be that station. Because I don't have a one-to-one -one, and I don't think I ever will have a one-to-one. -one. I had four Chromebooks and three iPads. So we kind of made it work. I then borrowed still stole uh, Chromebooks at the time so that I could share and so that we have enough for the class to do two to one. But I normally wouldn't have it. So it's not like I have like I had everything at school because I, I didn't. Um, these kids were able to handle it. They were able to be logging on, working with their partners, uh, doing different activities. And I'm going to show you some of those things that, that we did. So the biggest thing I think first is all first of all is not about well it's the tool is Gabe and that's what I want to use and that's what I'm going to do. I think the biggest thing you need to be focusing on is your what is your purpose? Why are you doing something? It's all about the learning, not about the tool. But if the learning is going to mesh with your tool, then you can use it. I think giving kids choice and being able to allow them to be able to show their learning on an iPad, on a piece of paper, on a Chromebook, then, then you're giving them options. And you have to provide those options and provide them how to use those things 
So being able to show them different apps like using Google Docs or Google Draw, being able to show those, then they have them in their backpack to be able to use them later on. Uh, collaboration is a big one, being able to work together. Uh, Google Read and Write, I think that's like a huge thing for primaries because they can't necessarily read or write yet. But with Google Read and Write, they can do it. Not great on a, an iPad, but on a Chromebook, it's fantastic. You can you can just kind of click on it and you can press play, and they can hear whatever's being written, whatever's being like the text, which is huge. Um, speech to text is Google Read and Write. You can also use Siri for speech to text, which is a big one. Uh, just a different variety of technology when you're thinking about game. Okay, what else can you use? That home school connection, things that you do at school, you can now do at home. I didn't have that big connection at my school. I was probably maybe two kids that maybe went home and kept using it, but some schools you do have that. So that's great that they can be able to do something at school and then continue on the learning at home. Um, it is less paper if you're gonna do it this way. They can do something on a paper opposed to printing something out. And it's just another way to engage. So you wanna remember it's about the learning, not the tool. So think about your purpose before you're just kinda of saying, we're all gonna do this now. When you're introducing games to your class, one-to-one -one isn't needed, as I was saying. Um, it's an idea, an ideal world, a world in primary and elementary, we're not gonna have one-to-one. -one. Um, so, borrow when you can, use them when you can, work with your pod group, see when you can borrow them, see if you can go two-to-one. Create uh, Google partners, uh, and then go really slow at first, because they're primary and they're gonna need the instructions a little bit slower so that they can figure it out. Um, teach them something easy, let them play at first. Because if you're wanting to assess something, they need to feel comfortable with it. It's the same idea in math. If we want to use them a new manipulative, we're going to put it on their desk first and let them play with it before we ask them to do something. It's the same thing with these tools. Let them play, let them see it first. And you do not need to be an expert. Don't feel that you have to have everything going and you have everything figured out before you do it. Try it out. Learn with the kids. Be afraid. Be okay with making a mistake and learn together. I think every time I try something new, I feel sick and I'm like, what am I doing? But yet it always comes out being amazing because they, you do it together. So don't feel like you need everything together, just try it and ask questions. Google is one of probably my best friends of what I have to ask to figure things out. And as I was saying, play. Play to explore. Let the students feel comfortable with different, with different apps before you ask them to do something that you really want to check. So let them play. And I'm going to show you different things you can do that with. Now in order to use some of these apps, I found the easiest way was using Google Classroom. So I created a class for my kids. And so in my classroom, then I could put the, uh, the pieces that I wanted them to do. It's just the easiest, quickest way to take something that you want everyone to do and give it to all of them because now they have it on their drive. In primary, I call that drive their sky desk because it's, it's a desk in the sky. You can't get all your pieces of paper in your desk at home, but at home you could still have your sky desk. You could log in. So I gave them those instructions to kind of figure out how to do it, and then they could be able to go here. So this is just, Google Classroom is just really just that easiest way just to push things out. Because we're talking primary and you're sending, you want them to use it at home, if that's kind of the school, you can't just expect them to know it. In junior, you might be able to say, this is how we use our sky desk, and then they go home and do it. They're not gonna be able to do that. So I created some instructions for home. So it just kind of goes step by step, how to log in, how to get there, what to go, and I got little arrows pushing what things, and this is just a front to back about Google Drive, and then I have a front to back about logging into Google Classroom. Um, generally, if I've got something in Google Classroom, I've pushed it to the kids, and they went in during class time, so they don't have to go in here, but you might want them to go to Google Classroom so you could use this. These are both on that website that I showed at the beginning. All of those are, feel free to use. They are just a view, so copy it and then change what you need. Feel free to change it. If you find something that's gonna work better, let me know, because I'm always willing to change things up. So just some different examples about some of the apps we've, we've tried or things that I've seen. Um, make, so Google Draw, the one thing is this has to be on a Chromebook, it doesn't work on an iPad for Draw. This one's just a quick little um, example. There was a line, so they have to try to use the colors, the shapes, the sizes, they didn't really, this was their example that we thought maybe they could try doing it, and this is what they created. So this one doesn't even have a line anymore, but they got the point. My purpose and what I wanted them to do is being able to explore color, shapes, lines, they could do that. They could understand. They figured it out. I let them play. They have, this was a playing time. So maybe next time I wouldn't put the line in there. I might give them a blank piece of paper and say, what can you do with it? What can you create? Get them to play. Get them to feel comfortable with it. Other things you could do, this is just a template in Draw. So the teacher has created this template 
out of these pictures, and then the kids have to click and drag the pictures in with the different sounds. This could be a station. This could be another station, a letter sort. So all of the, the pictures here are all going to end in one of these sounds. You have to click it and then just drag it in. Then if you're finished it, you can submit it and now you've got it as in your class. Uh, sequencing. Take and read them if they're if, depending on your level of kids. Uh, sequencing, you can just put them in. So they, again, this is just a template a teacher's created and then they've moved them around. Uh, labeling. So again, they created a temp they created a template, they put in the image, they've made the boxes, and now the kids just have to go in and type the words in. You can do this with a, a plant, uh, a lot of different science things. Creating charts, they have to add in their own images, so you just leave it blank. You're just wanting the kids to go in to draw, and you want them to create a chart. Maybe it's a facts and opinions, they can add in their text, they can add in their pictures. Uh, Google Docs. <coughs> this one, uh, I created in with my grade ones because they knew I knew that they knew how to use Google Draw. So they created their drawings before. So now I created something where they have to insert their drawing into the box. The great thing about Google Docs is that then you go to insert drawing and it pops up with a simplified screen of Google Draw. And so they already knew how to use the lines and the colors. And so then they can put that in here. And now they can tell me about your picture. I use this for Google Read and Write. So I didn't have them write. I wanted them to see how could they use Google Read and Write which is a really great, if you haven't explored with it, check it out, go to the workshops on it. I think it's like fabulous for, uh, for primaries to be able to use. And they can use it in docs. You can't use Google Read and Write in Draw. That's why I've inserted a picture here, because you can do it here, and they can do their writing. Uh, so I had in my class, they were in two to one, so we had 10 Chromebooks, kids were talking, and it picked up their voices and what they were saying. I didn't have headsets for them. I was just kind of trying it out to see what would work. And it was, they were able to do it. One of my lowest boys, he was getting an R at the end of the year, wouldn't produce anything in writing. He created this sentence and he did it independently because he spoke it. This is my car, it's fast, this is my car, I like it. And he did that on his own because he pressed record and he talked. And then he listened back and then he clicked the cursor and he listened to what he wrote. Huge for him. He couldn't produce this on his own with a paper and pencil. He was able to do this, I was able to see his thinking. And so from here you could go further on. Uh, someone who is a little, she was a little higher up, she was able to say a lot more. And this was just kind of the practice one. So she was very oral. So she would have been able to kind of keep going with sentences if I wanted to. So you might want to think of your purpose of maybe Google Read and Write is for some of your kids that are lower. And maybe this is a way to get their thinking out. Uh, grade two and three, maybe you're wanting to do some writing prompts. And so you can give them a picture. The nice thing about in Google Docs is you can go into insert and you can go uh, you can insert an image and then you can go and you can search and so Google your Google search drive is right there and So then you can just type it in so I just found two picture prompts They just had to choose one of them and then do their own writing and so then they were able to do that And then the teacher it was actually like instant feedback because the teacher added some comments right away So he highlighted what he was doing and he's added in his comments of what he's wanted to switch this way If you do it this way these will resolve so you'll lose them. I've also created this here. It's a one cell table to create so then you've got your boxes I think sometimes kids need a space to where they can put their things so you get a one cell table and then the cursor can go in there and then I've created a second one cell table with the word feedback on it so that's for me so once they finish writing I've got all of these in my drive I can go in and I can give them feedback kids who can't kids who can't even read all of it they can go into Google read and write click on put the cursor press play and it will read it for you so then they can hear what they've done. And then you also have a saved document of your feedback. It's not going to be lost anywhere you have it. So now you've got this page with the writing and the feedback, and then you could share it if you wanted or you've got it. Uh, a different, another way of doing docs, um, word, word wall practice, creating sentences, highlight them, just, just extra things you can be thinking of centers. Um, and for time, I'm just going to keep on flying through. Google Forms. This one is a big one for da data management and things, and I am really focused, I feel, on literacy. I kind of have a, a literacy focus, but you can think of the science, the math, and all the other pieces that will go in really well with all of these. I'm just kind of giving ideas just to spark you to get some other ideas. Um, the forms is a really great one because now you can add pictures. So now you can get early primary doing it. You can ask them a question, what is your favorite fruit? Strawberries, bananas, I think I had apples. And they can just click on one. Now you've looked at your forms, and so then on your response sheet, you've now created a pie chart. And then you can put it into a spreadsheet. 
and now you've got your sheet here. It has all of your answers that they've just come in, and then you can just go into graph, and it can create a graph. So now you just have some real data management, real time information that you've got. And you can just, you don't have to do this one for each student. You could have this on as just a questionnaire. This one's just even just, this is just my ELI attendance. So they can just, you can just have an iPad or you could have a Chromebook set up and you're just wanting to do some quick data management. Just have the website so you've created your form and then you've just created it so you can view it. And they can just answer the question, answer the questions, and you can even put a spot for a name if you want everyone's students or post them logging in. They can put their name and they just press submit. And then instantly you have their results, and then you can quickly look at what they're doing. Uh, another way for data, data management, just another question. I've got some grade two teachers that are thinking about using it this way, doing a bunch of questions, kind of gonna go quick, get a bunch of different things, and then be able to analyze the data from there. A big one here, I think, is doing like a listening center. This is called, and I'm gonna make sure I say the right thing here, justbooksreadaloud.com. And what it is, it's just books being read aloud. So it's, it's an adult who has a picture book underneath a camera, and they're flipping and they're reading the book. And so what I've done is in forms, you can insert a YouTube video. Now, the one workaround that I'm trying to figure out is it has to be YouTube, and I usually use like a safe tube so that you don't get the pop-ups, and I'm not sure if we can make that connection yet, so you do get ads. But if you play this, I'm just going to show you here. Sorry, camera. So just put in a book, and you just place the book. So you can have this as a listening center. And then it might just be as a simple simple question as in, did you like the story? Because this could be primaries you're doing this. Or you could be like kindergarten. Did you like the story, yes or no? And then put in your name. You could connect it to With you put a, put a rock star in, so which gives you a couple different headphones, headsets. You can have one Chromebook, and maybe you have a science video that they have to watch. Or maybe you put on a, a book here, and the question at the end is, can you come up in your group to find out the main idea and write it down? And so it's just created as a form. They have to listen, and then they have to do a response. So you could do that. You could use this as your listening center, opposed to using um, you could use uh, like tumble books and all those work, even CDs or tapes. But you could also this is just another way to do it. Slides is another way that I think of it like a class book. You can create your slides, you have them all there, and then, you, then you've got your slides. So it could just be an all about me. I like adding your images. This is a great way to get kids to start understanding how to do Again, this is kind of like the play piece of being able to add in your pictures, and then they'll know how to be able to do that for another time. I like, I dislike, you could do it for your class. You've created a book, and now you have a book that you can read together. Or an alphabet book. Each page, each sheet is a letter, and you just go through, and you've got A, and you just, you're just inserting pictures. What pictures can you get for A? What pictures can you get for B? This can work on an iPad, or it could work on a cookbook. Sheets, um, Alice Keeler is really, really big in doing conditional formatting, and she's really not great at sharing. Um, Christine Pinto is one that also looks at it more for the primary sides of things. So they've created these things, and you can just use them, share them. Uh, well, this one is a tense frame. And like so one is red, two is orange, three is yellow, so then you just put the number in here. So you could just go one, 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 and then four, 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 so these would all turn red. And if you put a four here, it would instantly turn green. And then it could give you your tense frame, and then you could put and then you put in your number sentence. If you actually put in equals, they've got the formatting in there that it will give you the answer. So you can say equals two plus two, and it will tell you it's four. And so then you know, well that didn't make ten and you can try it again. So these are just different ways that you could use it in, in uh, math. It's also, they have it as two tabs, so then there's a one with three colors. So you could do it with three colors, so you'd have to have three lines. Use this one I believe so. I'll play with that. And now, she does a lot of graphing. Again, it's that conditional formatting idea, so if you click onto that, you put anything in that, that it will create a color, and there'll be different colors. They have them for weather, she has them for counting bears. 
There's lots of different pieces in there. I'll have the site that you can take a look at. So this site here is the beginning of the, the, the uh, slideshow as well. It has all of my forms. So all of the uh, folders I have here have all that information. Um, feel free to use all of it. Uh, it also has uh, my slideshow there that has all these other connections in it. My intro letters, all of the things that we've done, you can use those. And I'll put this back up in just a moment. Um, just to check these things out just quick before we have to go. Uh, Christine Pinto, uh, Gay for Littles. So she's looking at, I think they call it TK, and it's just like the younger uh, younger kindergarten. Uh, sh they have a ton, and they like to share. If you're, on, if you're a Twitter person, check out this hashtag. If you go into templates, it's where they share all those templates. It's like the template, like these ones, they're all there. So you can just go in them. You can create your own copy, and you have them. Uh, another one is primarily Google, um, Susan, Susan Stewart, and she's created one, it's all again, all primary. She has it by subject, so there's a math, there's a, a language, there's a science one. Uh, this Space 10 one, it's a hyperdoc, it's pretty great. Um, it comes up with a YouTube video that you watch first about numbers, and then it creates a base 10 blocks where you have to slide them in and you put them in. Maybe you have a small group, maybe you have a parent, and you just want to be able to send them in order work with them together, they can press, press play and they can do this and they can work through that together. She has a lot of things, she can share them all. I was saying I was doing a presentation, she said use whatever you want, share it, whatever, like she's very, they're very old, like very, very open, all of them. And then Alice Keeler is the other one, she has a ton on there and she also has one site which five Google Apps for Kindergarten, um, very, very cool things that very young primaries can handle. Yeah. And that, with four minutes left, is it. So.